This video is a behind the scenes look at my efforts to have a career as a science educator on YouTube. I am in the very beginnings of my journey, just two months in, but I like to be transparent with how much I'm earning and what I am learning and with upcoming projects and what I have going on. So if you're interested in what I did this month and what I'm going to do next month, this video is for you. In February, I sent this to my Science in the Mailbox patrons on Patreon. Each month I like to send them something and this month I sent them Science Mom's Guide to Water 3, a little foldable coloring book, as well as a little bookcase that will hold all of the Science Mom's Guide to Water books once they are complete. And I filled it in with a few little coloring books because we're only about halfway there so far. We have done Science Mom's Guide to Water 1, 2, and 3, and 4 will be coming out soon. So that's what I sent out in February. And the big event of the month, just on a personal note, was that we went backpacking in the Mojave National Preserve and camped on sand dunes, and that was fantastic love backpacking, especially when we go barefoot. Um, reading, writing, and arithmetic. I read one excellent book this month. It was The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl by Shannon Hale. Laugh out loud funny, fantastic. My kids and I all, we, we loved it. It was great. And writing, again, took a back seat to science stuff. So if you have creative projects, they're kind of like, um, it's kind of like having a bunch of hungry Pac-Man children who always want to be eating, resources, attention, and time. Currently, the little yellow yellow one here, the science mom, they are getting all of my creative energy and attention, and novel writing is starting to feel a little angry and left out. I just kind of get the sense that the novel writing child is getting a little upset that they have been neglected. And so I need to give more time and attention to novel writing next month because I don't want this to happen. <laughs> if you neglect your creative child for too long, sometimes they get mad and they assert their need for attention. I'm going to do more work on my novels next month. All right, on to the month by numbers. I earned 28 cents on YouTube last month. I do not get paid until I get to the minimum payout level, which is $100. And at this rate, it's going to take a while to get there, but there you know, that's that's how much money I made on YouTube in February. I got one new patron on Patreon, yay! And I made three new little miniature foldable coloring books. So this one is on my website. These two went to patrons. And I released five videos in February. My total earnings on Patreon were $21.44, and I used that to buy hydrogen peroxide. I taught several lessons about catalysts and about um, chemical reactions using the elephant toothpaste demonstration, which is always a big crowd pleaser and lots of fun. And then I also tested out pasta rockets because I have Science Mom's Guide to Hydrogen Peroxide that will be coming up in a little bit, and so I'm doing some initial testing on experiments to get that ready. So thank you to patrons for providing the hydrogen peroxide budget this month. I had a lot of fun with that and so did a lot of kids. I taught 28 science lessons as a volunteer in my community in February, and I filmed one of them, the t Teach About Electricity with the Plasma Ball video, and you can see that by clicking through in the description or at the end of the video. I'll have a link to that as well. I got 78 new subscribers on YouTube, hooray! And total views for my videos in the month of February was 776. Most of those were on Science Mom's Guide to Water Part 3, that was the new Science Mom Guide video that posted this month, and Science Mom's Guide to Water Part 1. And the third highest um, video by far was Science Mom's first month as a YouTuber, which surprised me. I didn't expect that video to get as many as many views, but it did. So that was, yeah, that was the numbers. Now on two goals. Science Mom's Guide to Water Part 4 is in the works coming up. I got a little distracted in February with a coloring book about the heart and a little video that I did about the heart, but I made a big mistake in that video and said that blood is blue, blood is not blue. So I'm working up on a follow-up follow video about the myth that human blood is blue when it doesn't have oxygen. Um, Gnomes of Great Act Math Activity is coming along and really close to completion, and the science comic strips are still in the works. My goals in February were to post a video every Tuesday. I did that. Ching! And my second goal was to reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> and I did not, did not get there, but we made good progress. I started out the month with 31, and I ended with 110, which is great growth, but is still a long ways away from a thousand. So goals for March. I want to figure out a better balance between free content versus paid content. Ideally, I would love to give everything away for free and get paid to do it, but that's not the most sound business model to give away everything for free and expect people to then pay you for the free stuff that you're giving them. So I'm working on some lesson plans and some worksheets that would supplement the, the videos. I want the videos and the little foldable coloring books to always be free for everybody, but if I have lesson plans and worksheets that go along with them, I'm creating way more work for myself, <laughs> but um, they would be useful and I could put them on Teachers Pay Teachers and on Patreon and yeah, hopefully get generate some, some revenue. So I posted um, a lesson plan and worksheets to Teachers Pay Teachers, no one's bought it yet, um, and I put that up on Patreon as well. 
my goal for March is to update my Patreon page. I think the video needs an overhaul and to figure out closed captions. There has got to be a better way to do closed captions. If you know, well, please let me know in the comments. I'm struggling with this one. It takes me hours and hours to do closed captions, but closed captions are very important. The automatic captions that get put in are often not accurate. In fact, in one of my videos, I said, everyone be super, super quiet. That's what I said. And the closed captions that were automatically put in said, everybody be stupid like Wyatt. So <laughs> it's important to do closed captions and it takes me a really long time to do them. And I, I know there's a better way. I'm going to figure it out this month. And now some entrepreneur and business type stuff. When people ask me how Science Mom's going, my first response is to just feel really happy. I love doing this and I feel so fortunate that I get to do what I love. But generally when people ask me how my YouTube channel is going, they're not asking whether I am happy doing it. They're asking if I am solvent and if I am out of the red and into the black and earning more than I am spending. And the answer is no. I am still operating very much in the red where my investment in money and in time is way more than the monetary return. But I knew that that would be, I knew that's how it would be. In fact, if you watch Science Mom's first month as a YouTuber, really like it's 60% pep talk to myself that this is going to be hard. It's going to take a while, but you can do it. So I knew this would be the case, but nevertheless, I did have some feelings of disappointment this month. I made great videos. They did not go viral. Therefore, the internet is not a meritocracy. And that makes me feel kind of sad because I want it to be a meritocracy where great content will spread just by virtue of being great content. Um, I also had some moments of doubting my product, thinking, man, I thought miniature coloring books were the coolest thing ever, but maybe I'm the only one who's like, books, yay, I love books. I, it just it might be just me. Um, and I also kind of wondered, you know, maybe Science Mom videos are not rising above, clearly rising above the sea of science content on YouTube in the way that I thought. I thought they were something special. But maybe they just kind of merge in with all the other good educational content on YouTube and there's nothing that really sets them apart from science this and science that. So I did have some moments of self-doubt this month, but on the whole, things are going well and I'm very happy to be doing Science Mom. And we are growing, you know, 300 views up to 700 plus views is, is certainly progress. It's small change compared to the big channels where they're actually earning income from, from YouTube. And 28 cents is not enough to even buy a bottle of water, but we're making progress and it's been a lot of fun. So hopefully I will be able to do science full-time someday, but if not, there's always the option of just relegating it to a hobby and saying, I'm putting limits on how much I spend on you and you're not allowed to take over my life. So that's an option too, and either way, I will still get to do it, but I hope it is this one because I have 32 science lessons planned with, you know, three or four hands-on activities that would go with the video and then the little coloring, science coloring book that would go with it, but they take me a long time to make if they're doing it part-time. I can only do one a month or one every two months, so at that rate, the part-time hobby rate, it will take me about seven years to do them all. If I can go full-time, I could do about two a month and I would have them all out in a little over a year. So if you like my videos, consider being a patron ha! and I'll do more of them. All right, lessons learned. Don't delete your videos. I uploaded a video this month and after I uploaded it, I saw a couple things that I really wanted to fix and I thought, oh, dang it. There's a balance with uploading videos. You know, it'll never be perfect, but you have to say it's good enough that I'm going to post it and just let it go because there are always things that you could improve and tweak in the videos. So this one, it was so far below that that I thought, oh, I just have to fix a few things. And so I uploaded a new version of Science Mom's Guide to Light and then I deleted the first one. I should not have deleted it. I should have unlisted it, taken it from public to unlisted, and then moved it off the playlist, Teacher's Tips. But since I didn't do that, now when you look at teacher's tips, the first video shows this little deleted icon and is completely unavailable, gone, disappeared. And it, I think it'll be like that forever. I have no idea how to fix that. If you know how to fix it, let me know in the comments. And yeah, don't delete your videos. Bad idea. The other thing I learned is that promotion matters. If you look at the total views of my videos in February, most of the people coming to watch my videos came from external links, either my website or Facebook. And um, suggested videos made up about 20%. So that's not insignificant. That's pretty cool that because I used um, accurate t keywords and tags and had, you know, good little thumbnails, a lot of people would see a science video and then mine would come up as a suggested video afterwards and they would click on and watch it. So, yay YouTube! But external links, again, is driving almost half of the views of my videos. And a lot of that is coming just from me, me telling people about my videos and then them telling other people about my videos and 80% of it is from Facebook and from my website. And then your new content promotes your previous content is huge. When I would post a new video, views for all of my other videos would spike up for about a day 
and then they would drop back down. And then, you know, a few days later I'd post another video and views would spike up for a few days and then they would drop back down. So the advice to po post frequently is is important. It does a lot to promote your own channel if you're just active in your, your posting content. Thank you for watching and taking part of this journey for me. And if you are a patron on Patreon, a big thank you to you for your support. Did you know you can have a lot of fun with a leaf blower and an inflatable beach ball? This demonstration is a great way to teach about the Bernoulli principle or to use as an attention-getting activity for a physics lesson. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out other videos on my channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Work hard, grow smart. I'll see you next time.